Our question today concerns the Lord's Supper. And one wanting to know, just when should we take of the Lord's Supper? You know, that's a good question to ask, because whenever you look in Scripture, you don't find a passage that says, Thou shalt uh, take of the Lord's Supper on so-and-so day. Uh, that's not found that way. In fact, the Bible uh, doesn't always authorize things based upon a command. Sometimes we find authority by looking at apostolic example. And so whenever we look and see what the apostles did, and we see what these early Christians did when it came to partaking of the Lord's Supper, we find that it is very clear in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, for example, that they come together upon the first day of the week in order to partake of the Lord's Supper. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, it says here that on the first day of the week when the disciples were gathered together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech till midnight. Now that term, break bread there, is not talking about a common meal, but the term break bread is another way of, of talking about the partaking of the Lord's Supper. Now you'll notice there that in that passage, Acts 20 and verse 7, it says they did that upon the first day of the week. Now sometimes people go back and they say, well Jesus, when he instituted the Lord's Supper, more than likely he did it on a Thursday and Matthew 26, and then uh, some folks will look over in 1 Corinthians 11. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which discusses the Lord's Supper and discusses the elements and discusses our mindset when partaking, and then there's a little phrase there that's used that says, so often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And somebody says, well, there it is, so often as you do it. It doesn't say when to do it, it just says so often as you do. Well, that would, that would make sense other than we have plain statements of Scripture, such as Acts 20. And so someone says, well, so often as you eat it, and then that was their time, they just decided to do it on the, on the first day of the week, and it was just kind of random. Well, I would suggest to you it was not a random decision. And the reason why is when you look in the context of Acts chapter 20, we find that Paul and his companions had been at Troas for about a week now. And in fact, in Acts chapter 20, it says that he had waited that week in order to partake. And so that when, the, when on the first day of the week, then, when the disciples were gathered together to break bread. See, he waited until then. In fact, it says that in verse number 6, that they'd been there at Troas and they had waited the seven days. In other words, they'd waited that week. Evidently, they got there and they had, had missed that opportunity, had missed that time. But they didn't just go and, and had it been just whenever you wanted to, and if it was just whenever you liked to, then that would have made more sense to have said, well, you know, Paul's in a hurry and his companions are in a big hurry. Let's just go ahead and partake of the Lord's Supper, you know, on a Tuesday night or on a, on a Monday or a Thursday afternoon or whatever. Let's just go ahead and just get it done and, and give a chance for those folks to take the Lord's Supper, and we'll do it again another time. But that's not what happened. What happened was, in Troas, they waited, and upon the first day of the week, see, they partook of the Lord's Supper then. See, that's apostolic example. But that's not the only place in the book of Acts chapter 2. And, of course, Acts chapter 2, verse 41, speaks about the time when about 3,000 people were saved. Verse 42, and by the way, this is still the same time period. This is still the first day of the week, because the day of Pentecost came and, and was celebrated upon the first day of the week. And so here they were on the first day of the week, and it says they continued steadfastly, Acts 2.42. They continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. And again, that breaking of bread has to do with partaking the Lord's Supper. There's a different uh, time and a different context used when talking about breaking bread from house to house and having common meals and such. When it came to the Lord's Supper and the breaking of bread, uh, Acts 2.42, there they were doing it on the day of Pentecost, which is the first day of the week. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, again, now we're at Troas. We're at a place uh, you know, separated by miles, separated by time. This is a, you know, a few decades later, a few decades separated from Acts chapter 2. And in Acts 20 and verse 7, they're still upon the first day of the week breaking that bread. And again, you'll find uh, in the Corinthian letter, 1 Corinthians 16, talks about when they had come together. They were together on the first day of the week. 
And so here we see that emphasis placed upon the first day of the week in the Corinthian letter. And he says, as I gave orders to the churches of Galatia. So we have Galatians, that's at least four churches, and Corinth, and Troas, and Jerusalem. That's seven churches separated by time and miles and all, but all there gathered on the first day of the week. And those two passages, that is Acts 2.42 and Acts 20 verse 7, saying they partake of the Lord's Supper there on the first day of the week. And so that's where that comes from. What day we partake of the Lord's Supper? We partake of it on the first day of the week. And so long, so uh, every week that has a first day, that's the day that we partake of the Lord's Supper. 